Good morning. I'm Reverend Jolly from the Methodist Church in the Caribbean and the Americas, the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos Islands Conference, and Nassau Circuit of Churches. We read from Genesis chapter 21, verses 8 through to 21, from the New Revised Standard Version. The child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. But Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son Isaac. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. The matter was very distressing to Abraham on account of his son. But God said to Abraham, Do not be distressed because of the boy and because of your slave woman. Whatever Sarah says to you, do as she tells you. For it is through Isaac that offspring shall be named for you. As for the son of the slave woman, I will make a nation of him also, because he is your offspring. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and gave it to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder along with the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered about in the wilderness of Beersheba. When the water in the skin was gone, she cast the child under one of the bushes. Then she sent, she went and sat down opposite him a good way off about the distance of a bow shot. For she said, Do not let me look on the death of the child. And as she sat opposite him, she lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the boy. And the angel of God called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What troubles you, Hagar? Do not be afraid, for God has heard the voice of the boy where he is. Come, lift up the boy and hold him fast with your hand. For I will make a great nation of him. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. She went and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy and he grew up. He lived in the wilderness and became an expert with the bow. He lived in the wilderness of Paran and his mother got a wife for him from the land of Egypt. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Outsiders. That's what many persons in society would identify themselves at in relation to their families, perhaps a black sheep. Some persons in relation to how others view them in society in general. And some persons even in relation to the church. They consider themselves outsiders. That is what Hagar and Ishmael became. And yet, in my reading of this passage, they represent the many millions of people in this world who are in situations that have landed them into this label and have been handed to them by those who are given the power in society to dictate who they are and what they are entitled to. Hagar, perhaps from the time of her birth, or because she came to Abraham's house as a spoil of war, was simply a household commodity. Genesis 16 verses 1 to 2 says, Now Sarai, Abraham's wife, bore him no children. She had an Egyptian slave girl whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said to Abram, You see that the Lord has prevented me from bearing children. Go into my slave girl. It may be that I shall obtain children by her. And Abram listened to the voice of Sarai. In this passage, Sarah and Abraham can represent two voices in the church that still demand, enable, and encourage the handling of human beings as commodities today. In chapter 16, Sarai gave the order and Abram complied. In chapter 21, it says, But Sarah saw the son of Hagar the Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, playing with her son. So she said to Abraham, Cast out this slave woman with her son, for the son of this slave woman shall not inherit along with my son Isaac. And Abraham became distressed because naturally he would comply. But the voice of God intervened and gave Abraham some comfort in following the instructions of Sarah, whose greed, insecurity, and fear were directing her conduct and guiding her sense of relationship with her fellow human beings. After all, That was their way of life. It was the normal hierarchy and it was the societal norm of their day. In the church, we also have at least two voices. 
um, that are similar to those two voices. The voice of outright discrimination and the voice that is silent in the face of it. The voice that turns a blind eye to it. Those who go along with it because it is the acceptable norm and then pray that somehow God will intervene where we believe we do not have the resources and the, and the courage to. With Hagar and Ishmael, God did intervene, demonstrating that there is no one who does not belong, because all belong to God. Outsider. That's what Christ became in order to intervene on our behalf. And as we exist as a church, knowing what we know about the sacrificial, the bold, the extravagant, the messy, the liberating love of Christ, we have no choice. And we no longer have any excuse to continue the same modus operandi that human beings have held on to in societies and generations past. James Cone, known for establishing black liberation theology, is quoted to have said that any theology that is indifferent to the theme of liberation theology is not Christian theology. What this means is that we can no longer in the Christian church be satisfied in being the voice of Sarah or the voice of Abraham in this instance, but we must be the voice and the face of God to the outsiders of our world, each and every one of them. Since the existence of human beings, in times of difficulty, confusion, war and violence, the world's most vulnerable people are the ones that are commodified and become disposable, usable and discardable. And we see how we are no different today as we watch again and again the brutality towards people of color, black persons in the United States, as we watch it unfold in a system of racism and a system of moral emptiness that has existed for hundreds of years and included the transatlantic slave trade. And we know that we face our own battles with this locally and we face and we battle the fruits of colonialism and corruption here in the Caribbean. When Abram and Sarai were in distress and their life circumstances were not providing the needs as they desired, they used the woman with no status of her own. And when Abram and Sarah were blessed with having what they needed and wanted, they discarded the riffraff and Hagar and Ishmael simply became baggage. They didn't see themselves as being responsible anymore for the household commodities that they could no longer understand or control. The church, we must recognize that we have often held a position of power in society in terms of our voice being re respected for many years. As a household of faith, we must now look honestly at ourselves as we consider this. And as we consider that may, there are many persons around us and many circumstances that now can cause us to feel that we are out of control. We have in our societies today so many people the church does not understand. The people in our communities now more than ever, now more than not, are resisting anything that appears to um, seem like control or manipulation. Women are embracing themselves, embracing feminism, and femininity is being seen more and more as a strength instead of a weakness. We are finding our voices. People of color are loving ourselves and demanding that it be understood that our lives matter and that we are not commodities. Millennials and refugees are teaching us all that there are no walls that can be built high enough to keep a dreamer from reaching their final destination. What then are we called to do and be as the face of God in light of all of this, in light of progressive thought and in light of perplexing realities? The question is, what can we do? What new thing is Christ willing to do and make come alive in us, the church? We can commit to examining ourselves and our use of gender-exclusive language in worship, in prayer, and in versions of the scripture that we cling to. We can give messages of unbiased equality for all people. Everyone belongs to God. Remember 
Hey, even when Hagar was sent away from the house of Abraham, God went with her, and God assured her that she and her child had a purpose, and they had a place where they belonged. They belong to God, and so does every other human being on the face of this earth and every created thing. Let us remember this as we daily face the choice to be the face and the voice of fear or to be the face and the voice of an almighty and loving God. Amen.